there everyone welcome back today I wanted to talk about a book I just recently read you know I did a video well I hope you know I did a video uh, recently on the first best-selling book in America well of course there's some debate about that but this is according to the list of publishers weekly the yearly bestseller list of publishers weekly which is the oldest list I could find keeping track of bestsellers in America. So this is like the official list. So the first bestseller was 1895. This bestseller is the next year, 1896. I know you can figure that out on your own. The bestseller of 1896, according to Publishers Weekly, is Tom Grogan by F. Hopkinson Smith. F. Hopkinson Smith stands for Francis Hopkinson Smith. I'm taking that one word at a time. It's a little hard to say. 1838 to 1915. Now, he was a fairly prolific author. Uh, he wrote travelogues such as A White Umbrella in Mexico and novels such as Felix O'Day. Many of these were very popular. Several of them were even made into silent films, some of which are lost, but some of them you can still find. He was a pretty interesting guy. He also worked as a contractor and uh, got several government projects, including the base for the Statue of Liberty. He also was a painter doing numerous sketches and at least 15 known and prominently displayed oil paintings. Now, not satisfied with doing just that, he also invented the Grand Harmonicon, a set of musical glasses marked for different notes, you know how you can play the glasses, set in a wooden stand. You can see this at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Going back to the book, Tom Grogan was, as many novels of the day, originally a serial in Century Magazine, with illustrations by Charles Stanley Reinhardt. It's set on Staten Island, and the plot follows the character of the title, or rather his wife. And Tom himself was a hardworking contractor Irishman. He met with an accident, and it was bad enough that he had to be confined to an asylum. And that happened before the book started, and he's been there ever since. His wife is every bit as hardworking, so she goes ahead and takes over the business and works under his name. She has everyone call her by his name and signs his name to everything. Not only does she want to honor the work that he's put into it so far, but his name is known as a good and honest one to do business with, so it's more or less a good business decision on her part. So Tom Grogan, for all intents and purposes, is the woman. She is the wife. And she's the hero of this story. She's not only hardworking, but she's capable, honest, trustworthy, a good decision maker. We don't actually learn her name until nearly the end. Only her father calls her by her real name. So basically, she's a darn good business person, and she easily earns the respect of most men she works with. Naturally, there are those who want to kick her out, not only because she's a woman, but that does make a convenient excuse to want to get rid of her all the more. Now, interestingly, the main villains here are members of the local union. You do not find that tack a lot in fiction. Tom does not want to join the union, and since she is a non-union contractor, she's able to undercut the union's prices. The union men are depicted as only too willing to resort to unsavory means. Um, there was one that was a bit shocking, him gasping out loud, um, a bit of violence. Not sexual violence or anything like that. This was 1896, and they weren't going to show anything like that. Um, but still, violence. Uh, so they're only too willing to resort to that in order to try and end their competition. But through it all, Tom is a formidable and sympathetic opponent. She's not only the sole breadwinner for her children, but she also employs many good men. And she has a great deal of sympathy for the people in the community whose husbands and fathers she employs. There's some impassioned outbursts, not overly dramatic, but... They do make you feel a great deal of sympathy for this woman who has such a burden on her shoulders and is doing her best not to buckle under the pressure. This was such a popular book, it was made into a popular stage play um, starring Alice Fisher, a well-known actress of the time. The play did change several points in the story as 
adaptions tend to do, but she received warm criticism of her role, many saying the role was meant for her. So there are points to this book that are no doubt dated today, but also many points in which it feels pretty fresh. It's not a feminist manifesto by any means, but it does display attitudes very refreshing towards a woman and particularly a woman in business, considering the time it was written. It's not what I was expecting to find. So just like many characters in the book, I was taken by surprise by the hero, and pleasantly so. Not to mention she is a single parent doing her darndest to get by. And I'm not one personally, but goodness knows there are plenty of those even to this day. Just trying so hard to get by, and it seems that there are others who are trying their darndest to make her fail. I've really enjoyed this book. It deals with some heavy themes, you know, but it doesn't get overly heavy. It does get melodramatic at some points, again, considering the time in which it was written. But overall, it's a good, solid, but smooth read. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a beach read, but it's not War and Peace either. (laughs) At just over 200 pages, you can read this in an afternoon. I didn't, but I have a very weird way of developed of reading books. I'll read two at a time, a chapter of one, a chapter of the other, and I'll bounce back and forth. It's it's weird, and you wouldn't think I'd be able to concentrate, but actually it works really well. And especially with this one, I had no trouble hopping out of it and hopping back in. Unlike with the last book, there aren't a ton of passages that jumped out at me. Uh, But there was one that I'm going to read really quick um, that made me giggle. That invincible spirit which dwelt in Tom's breast, that spirit which had dared lathers, outwitted Duffy, cowed Crimmins, and braved the Union, did not, strange to say, dominate all the members of her own household. One defied her. This was no other than that despoiler of new-washed clothes, old harness, wagon grease, time books, and spring flowers, that Arab of the open lot, Stumpy the Goat. And that says it all. Nobody crosses this woman. They don't have a problem with it at all. They respect her. Except the goat. Ghosts don't respect anybody. Anyway, this was a good good read. Very fun in parts. Touching at moments. A, a good solid read. I can see why it was a bestseller at the time. So very much recommended. Tom Grogan. The Publisher's Weekly Bestseller of 1896. So... Put down your feather duster and sip some tea and whatever else victorian stuff there is. Or, or 1896, is that the Gilded Age? One of those, is that the same thing? I'm not sure. In any case, pick up this book, read it, enjoy it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.